I'm here today with Dr. Rick Grimm, who is the medical director of our Echo Lab, and Helga Lombardo, who's the manager of our Echo Lab, to talk about echocardiogram. So, Dr. Grimm, how do you, uh, can you talk about the different types of echo, and then how do doctors choose the type of echocardiogram for a patient? Sure. So, uh, an echocardiogram is is just a, a, an ultrasound uh, procedure. Uh, specifically geared towards evaluating the heart, uh, and uh, hence uh, the, the term echocardiogram uh, can also be called cardiac ultrasound. But it's a non-invasive test, uh, and uh, it's very routinely uh, performed, and in fact, I would consider it to be the most important diagnostic test for cardiologists, uh, for, for physicians in general. Uh, in terms of uh, wanting to evaluate all aspects of the heart uh, relative to heart function, uh, valvular disease, uh, hemodynamics, and concern for uh, artery disease. So it's a very, very important uh, test to us. Uh, uh, patients uh, uh, will see different uh, environments in, in which the, these are done. In our environment, our laboratory is actually associated, in, in fact, uh, uh, proximity-wise uh, in our hospital, in the ground floor of our hospital, and we actually uh, perform these uh, tests in our laboratory on both inpatient and outpatients uh, alike uh, on any, any, any given day. Uh, it's relatively simple and, and, and is absolutely painless uh, for the patients. Uh, the patients uh, come into our laboratory uh, uh, they they uh, do need to be uh, uh, put into a gown and, and so in order that we are able to access the chest wall and a small probe is actually inserted on the chest wall and from the surface of the chest we are able to acquire the ultrasound uh, images and the test uh, generally takes uh, between 30 and uh, 60 minutes depending on the uh, complexity of the case and the underlying diagnosis of the patient, uh, but it again is a procedure in which the patient simply uh, needs to lie on a, on a, on a bed and, and the images are acquired and after about 30 to 60 minutes uh, most of the information is usually uh, obtained uh, on any given case. So sometimes patients have to get a more extensive echo. Like there might be ones with exercise or they may get ones where there's a probe down their throat or different right. things. Like right. how do you choose which one? Right, right. Well, first of all, uh, uh, regarding the one that we actually mm -hmm. insert <clears throat> like an endoscope mm -hmm. uh, and just like a gastroenterology examination of the stomach, mm -hmm. uh, the, the probe, the actual... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the actual uh, imaging capability is on the end of this probe and we can insert this into the food pipe. It sits in the esophagus which is right next to the heart uh, and we're able as a result to get very, very high definition, mm -hmm. high fidelity images uh, from the esophagus uh, because we're so close to the heart and very exquisite images of the heart. Uh, as opposed to the chest wall where, where the ultrasound beam needs to penetrate through the bone and skin and soft tissue. Uh, again, when it's sitting in the esophagus right next to the heart, uh, the images are, are just much uh, more high fidelity and high resolution uh, images. Uh, and so in some cases, in most, the overwhelming majority of the cases, we can acquire adequate images from the chest wall. But in some cases, and particularly for structures of the heart that are posterior or uh, in, in the back aspect of the heart, uh, this transesophageal imaging is, is optimal. Mm -hmm. and, and often, uh, for example, patients that have uh, any pathology of the mitral valve, which is a more posterior structure, or the left atrium, which is a more posterior structure in the heart, that is best imaged with a transesophageal echocardiogram. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what should patients know as far as coming for an echocardiogram? For a standard transthoracic echocardiogram, there really isn't much to the patient. It's a painless test. They'll be lying on a table, asked maybe to have um, their positions changed from one lateral decubitus to on their back. Um, they may hear sounds, which is the Doppler coming out of the machine, but for the most part, it's a painless test. Mm -hmm. For a stress echo, if they're coming for a stress echo, to wear comfortable shoes because they'll be running on a treadmill. And for a transesophageal echo, 
Um, basically, again, they're transferred into a gown, but they do need to bring a driver because they are um, lightly sedated and they need to make sure that they have someone who can safely take them home. And how um, a lot of times patients try to read their tests on their own. <laughs> and they'll call because they have questions. What would you like to say to patients about the test results? Yeah, right. Well, I, I would caution uh -huh. uh, the, the uh, attempt to in, uh, interpret uh, without uh, some guidance. Uh, a lot of the terminology can be very involved and, and, and complex, of course, and potentially misleading, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and some uh, factors that might appear uh, somewhat unusual or, or, or out of the range of, of normal, et cetera, uh, may or may not be, uh, in fact, depending on uh, what exactly is being evaluated. And in, a, in many cases, it may not even be pertinent to the given uh, patient's condition. Uh, so I, I would interpret those with a grain of salt uh, when, when you're looking at that. Uh, and, and ask questions of your physician, of course, uh, and, and directly uh, uh, address a medical personnel regarding those findings and any questions you may have, mm -hmm. definitely. Well, thank you both for answering our questions, and thank I know you. this will be very helpful to our patients. Wonderful. Thank Thanks. you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful.